This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. The Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportor Transportation Safety Board continue to investigate the deadly helicopter crash in St. Thomas. This as we learn more about the four victims. Officials have not officially released their names as of yet, but as we first reported, the small USVI community knows who they are and are deeply mourning their loss. The pilot, Maria Rodriguez, was a lifelong St. Thomas resident and the co-owner of Caribbean Buzz Helicopters. These pictures posted on Facebook by country musician Kenny Chesney, who knew her well. We learned Rodriguez was honored as the Helicopter Association's International's Apparel Pilot of the Year for stepping up to help in a big way on relief efforts following hurricanes Irma and Maria. She flew relief missions for nearly a month in the Virgin Islands. She reportedly had 25 years of experience piloting helicopters and is survived by her husband and two children. The helicopter's passengers, we've learned, was the Yanon family. Tyler was a student of Antilles School and his parents, Daniel and Nisha Zahn, were all on the plane and did not survive. Tyler was a senior at Antilles School where the, this week they canceled classes for students and teachers to mourn and receive counseling if they wished. The family was members of the St. Thomas Reformed Church where members are still in disbelief and mourning today. Well, a medical examiner is now working to confirm the identity of those victims while investigators try to determine just what led to the deadly crash Monday afternoon around 315 in Botany Bay. And of course, USVI News will continue to follow the developments as they come forward. Well, a St. Croix man who was out of jail is now back behind bars charged with illegal firearm possession. 24-year-old Daniel Haywood turned himself into police in St. Croix this week. There was a warrant out for his arrest for unauthorized possession of a firearm. Police say he violated his terms of his pretrial release from a June 2020 arrest. VIPD tells us Haywood was seen on surveillance video firing a firearm at a vehicle after people inside of that vehicle opened fire on him and others on King Street in Frederickstead back on October 9th. Now, the incident resulted in the death of a 21-year-old man. Haywood has not been charged with him, his homicide, though. Haywood is in prison with bonds set at $100,000. This week, eligible military veterans can get easy access to a COVID-19 vaccine. The VA Caribbean Health Care System is offering COVID vaccinations to veterans in the St. Thomas and St. John District this week. The groups of the following groups are eligible veterans who are registered and eligible to receive care at the VA who are 55 years old or older. Vets who are on hemodialysis, chemotherapy, have spinal cord or organ transplant patients, homeless veterans, and veterans who are first responders as well. So you have to make an appointment to receive a vaccine at one of the clinics hosted by the VA Office of Veteran Affairs this week. To make an appointment, you can call any of the numbers that are there on your screen. Both clinics will be at the Niski Church Fellowship Hall. The first is February 18th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., then again this Friday, the 19th at the same time, 9 to 1. Walk-ins will be accepted only if vaccines remain available once all scheduled appointments have been accommodated. By the way, St. Croix veterans who have taken the first doses back in January will be receiving their second dose next week. Congress is out of session this week, but when they return, Virgin Islands Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett will begin a new role on one of the most powerful Ways and Means Committee. Our Washington correspondent, Matt Knadler, recently spoke with Congresswoman Plaskett about what it means for the VI and the territories overall. If I could, I'll just get a quick comment with you on, on the Ways and Means thing, because I don't think a lot of people understand the significance of that. Um, that's a, a huge appointment. If you could just tell me this kind of reiterate for our viewers the significance of that well um the ways and means committee is not only the oldest committee in congress it is its jurisdiction is actually discussed in the constitution but it's also the most exclusive meaning the smallest committee in congress the hardest committee to be a member of i am only the fourth black woman to be on that committee and um, there has never, ever been a member of the territories. And actually, it's our understanding that in the early 70s, 
there was a meeting of leadership in Congress who agreed that there would never be a member of a territory on um, that committee. So not only having the support of leadership, but the caucus unanimously agreeing that I should be on this committee um, is really just, you know, the culmination of a lot of work on our part um, to be able to cons be considered an equal of other members. But it's important for the territories because so many of the issues of the Virgin Islands are, and all of the territories are in that committee. After my nomination, the new member, the new governor of Puerto Rico, Pedro P. Luisi, who had been a colleague of mine when he was in Congress, texted me and was like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff we can get done now. Um, because the rum cover over sits in ways and means for the Virgin Islands, our discussion about the gasoline excise tax and its reimbursement or a portion of it is in ways and means. All trade issues, customs issues, comes out of ways and means. Um, earned income tax credit, child tax credit, for which we're trying to get a permanent um, reimbursement is in ways and means. Even funding for Medicaid, Medicare, SSI, and who can receive it um, is in ways and means. And any package that is a rebuilding, a recovery, a reinvestment, any revenue generation is handled by ways and means. So being on this committee is going to allow us a seat at the table um, on the decision making about the issues that fundamentally impact the ability of the Virgin Islands to grow and to prosper um, by being on the committee that deals with the money, the revenue um, of the territory and how economic support can be given to it. A very important committee in glad and proud to see Congressman Plaskett serving on the Ways and Means Committee. Well, their Liberty Foundation, after joining forces with AT&T, awarded $50,000 to the Community Foundation here in the U.S. Virgin Islands after servicing us last November. Our Elenis Quinones brings us more now from Liberty's CEO. Liberty and AT&T joined forces last November to go to the USVI. Today, the Liberty Foundation awarded $50,000 to the Community Foundation and the USVI with the purpose of expanding. We talked to a Liberty CEO for more. When we, you know, entered the Virgin Island back on November 1st, you know, we said, okay, great. Now that we have presence there, what are we going to do? So we analyzed a bit of what, uh, you know, our predecessor AT&T was doing, and we talked to Anna at uh, Wheatley, at uh, Dr. Anna Wheatley at the, you know, Community Foundation of Virgin Island. And then they were doing great work. So we went and we analyzed what they do day to day. And sure enough, uh, you know, it met our four pillars. Our four pillars are very simple. We support education. We support, you know, the art and the culture. Uh, we support social well-being and we support the environment. Through these four pillars, Liberty aspires to contribute as the essential service they are. Much more now in the middle of a pandemic where lots of people work from home. One thing that, you know, has is clear to us as a telecommunication carrier is that we are an essential service, right? And we, we therefore have to act as an essential service. What, what does that mean? I mean that we have to provide a very reliable service, a service that customer can use to work, to, to study, to do whatever they need to do to continue on their daily life without any interruption. And we, are, we have taken on the responsibility and, and we take them very seriously. The CEO points out that communication will probably be the biggest task and will need to work with because of the challenges brought by the pandemic. The biggest challenge is going to be making sure that we communicate with our customers and we keep them uh, abreast of what is going on, right? Uh, we don't want, you know, people start making incorrect conclusions. So communicating with our customers is going to be critical and being in the market there to make sure we answer that question and their worries. Are you here? Are you not here? Are you going to stay here? Are you going to leave? You know, so all these little questions in my, in my, in, is my, uh, you know, when I go to the U.S., travel to the U.S., is my phone going to work? And the answer is yes, of course. So these little questions that we have to answer and little communication, that for me is, 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 is going to be our, our, uh, our big task. Liberty is also focusing on strengthening the infrastructure to make it more resilient. Reporting from Puerto Rico, Alanis Quiñones.